Afghanistan is potentially the last country in the world anyone would expect any sort of groundbreaking super projects to be taking place. Several events in the country's tumultuous history that we won't go into here have left the landscapes a war-ravaged wasteland, and several power struggles at the top have left the nation without a reliable figurehead during these difficult times. But occasionally, adversity blossoms into something remarkable. Amid news coverage of the nation, conflict steals the spotlight, but Afghanistan has quietly been implementing their first ever mega project, an artificial river named the Kosh Tepe Canal, touted to be one of the longest irrigation systems in the world upon completion. Even more impressively, they're currently halfway through construction solely through their own engineering acumen and have not enlisted any foreign aid whatsoever. So, what is the Kosh Tepe Canal? What is its purpose and how did a country so embroiled in uncertainty and struggle accomplish such an impressive feat of engineering? If you enjoy our videos, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. It helps us to keep delivering great content like this. Measuring 285 kilometers long, 152 meters wide and 8.5 meters deep, the Kosh Tepe Canal stretches across northern Afghanistan, beginning in the province of Balkh, stretching through Jauzjan and eventually coming to a stop in the westerly Faryab province. The concept of the canal project was first formulated during the 1970s under Afghanistan's inaugural president, Mohammed Daoud Khan. The actual construction, however, commenced in 2021 during the tenure of the last president, Ashraf Ghani. Following the Taliban's assumption of control in August 2021, the initiative came under their purview. Unexpectedly, the Taliban sanctioned approximately $100 million for the canal's development, a sum equivalent to roughly a quarter of Afghanistan's annual tax revenue. The goal of the canal is to siphon water from the Amu Darya River. Potentially up to a third may end up being diverted into Afghani territory. Understandably, this has caused tension with downstream Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, who also rely on the river. An Uzbeki presidential decree on April 1st cited forecasts that water resources in the basin will fall by 15 to 20 percent due to the Afghani canal. Afghanistan remains absent from regional water agreements. Nevertheless, it asserts its entitlement to its share of the Amu Darya, the sentiment echoed by various specialists and representatives of the Taliban. The canal is becoming an urgent necessity for northern Afghanis. Residents here are suffering from a combination of worsening food scarcity, four decades of war, three consecutive periods of intense drought, and a shifting climate that has disrupted traditional rainfall patterns. Over the last seven decades, Afghanistan has encountered a temperature increase of 1.8 degrees Celsius, which is twice the global average. The canal is projected to provide water to approximately 1 million Afghanis and enable farmers to kickstart the country's agricultural output with 550,000 hectares of land made available for farming, with a heavy emphasis placed on wheat and vegetable oil production. Initial estimates suggest that the construction of the canal in its current state has cost approximately $500 million, funded entirely by tax revenue from the government and overseen by the Afghani National Development Corporation. However, to see the project to completion, it's estimated that there will need to be an additional $100 million made available. So, how did the Afghans make such impressive progress on this gargantuan project with relatively dated tools and hardware, a scarce quantity of qualified engineers, and absolutely no assistance from any neighboring countries? Asian news outlets in surrounding countries cast aspersions on the project, citing inappropriate engineering procedures and generally shrouding the Afghans' efforts in doubt and negativity. However, we dug a little deeper and found some ingenious methods and clever workarounds from a country that doesn't have access to the cutting-edge tech available to more stable countries. The Kosh Tepe Canal is a masterpiece of engineering that defies nature's constraints. To bring water from the Amu Daya River to the surrounding parched regions, engineers had to devise ingenious solutions. Let's explore the key techniques that made this possible. To find an optimal path for the canal with the most fertile ground, the government began with rigorous land surveying and soil studies, without the need for heavy machinery to disturb the land. One of the most fundamental principles was the gravity flow system. By utilizing the natural slope of the land, engineers ensured a continuous flow of water from the higher elevation Amu Daya River to the lower lying fields. This reduced the need for energy intensive pumping systems and maximized efficiency. They also used the cut and fill method. 
engineers excavated soil from elevated areas to create a trench for the canal. This soil was then used to build up embankments along the canal's path, preventing water spillage and maintaining the desired gradient. In areas with varying elevations, locks and gates were implemented. These mechanisms allowed precise control over water levels, enabling the canal to navigate changes in terrain and avoid flooding downstream areas. To ensure the canal's efficiency, sedimentation ponds were strategically placed along the route. These ponds captured sediment and debris, preventing them from clogging the canal and maintaining a smooth and clean flow of water. The ingenuity doesn't end at the canal itself. A sophisticated network of secondary channels and pipelines distribute water to local crop fields, ensuring equitable access for farmers across the region. On a more humanitarian level, perhaps one of the most remarkable aspects of the Kosh Tepper Canal's construction was its ability to bring communities together. Neighbours became collaborators, sharing knowledge and resources, transcending boundaries to work towards a shared goal. However, not every aspect of the canal has been constructed perfectly, and its existence may have negative implications across the region further down the line. To save costs, the canal bed has not been sealed with cement, and along some stretches, briny groundwater has already seeped into the canal, tainting fresh water meant for irrigation. Feasibility studies approximate that 22% of water could be susceptible to leakage in certain segments. Additionally, the intake mechanism where the canal connects with the Amu Daria River could face challenges from sediment accumulation, potentially leading to expensive repairs. Also, the extraction of more water from Amu Daya means that it may become fundamentally impossible to restore aquatic ecosystems in the Aral Sea region, warning that the critically endangered false shovelnose sturgeon, also called the Amu Daya sturgeon, would be at risk of extinction. The survival of fish in the lower reaches and the wetlands of the Amu Daya and Priorali floodplains may also be at risk. The entirety of the project was estimated to have been fully completed by 2028, but at the current pace that things are progressing, it's now expected to be finished as early as 2025. As Afghanistan is mostly disconnected from the rest of the world's power infrastructure, a phenomenon that arose due to the construction of the canal is the implementation of solar panels along its bank. They serve a dual purpose. Not only do they generate clean, sustainable energy to power houses, water pumps and farm equipment, they also provide shade that helps reduce water evaporation from the canal. This innovative addition showcases how holistic planning can lead to positive cascading effects, from water conservation to the generation of clean energy, contributing to Afghanistan's sustainable development. Amidst Afghanistan's turbulent history, a beacon of hope emerges in the form of this mega-project. The Kosh Tepper Canal embodies the spirit of transformation, reminding us that adversity can birth innovation and progress. The arid landscape that have suffered the ravages of war, droughts and instability are now set to bloom with renewed life. With its dimensions surpassing even the most ambitious plans, the canal stands to reshape agriculture in northern Afghanistan. Picture millions of Afghan lives rejuvenated through the canal's life-giving waters. With such a vast quantity of arable land now available, families will cultivate not just crops but dreams of a prosperous future. Thanks for watching and until next time.